Okay, this video is for those of you who have got a cameo silhouette as opposed to a craft robo cutter. And I know there's a few tutorials on YouTube about how to get going with the cameo silhouette cutter. And I think a lot of you are finding it uh, quite difficult in getting the cut lines or the outlines to images. Now I'm not a cameo expert as I say I don't know how to use all the functions but all I'm going to show you is a simple way to get going with a couple of the little tools in the cameo silhouette. There are ways where you can automatically trace the outlines of certain objects or whatever but if you're using transfers I'm going to show you a simple way to put the cut line around it without relying on the software and tinkering about with the software. So first of all I'm just going to go to Google Images. I'm just going to find a, an image on Google Images, for example. Again, this is purely just for a test purpose. This is uh, an image which I'm going to pull off of the image, uh, Google Images, preferably with a white background. So that's going to save me cutting away all the, the background. So I'm going to go... Someone mentioned a motorcycle to me, so I'm going to actually type in a motorcycle and see what comes up. Now again, initially, I'm going to go to the search tools, where it's the search tools there and I'm going to click on size and I'm looking for large images so when you do that filter obviously all the images that are presented to you then are large images well let's just have a look here for example down the page we've got an image of an R1 motorcycle there it's 1280 by 731 I'm going to click on it once the image then comes up I'm then going to click on where it says original image view original image and that's the original image so I'm looking at that it's not got the background in I'm happy with that so all I'm going to do is right click on it and save image as I'm going to save the image I'm just going to call it Yamaha R1 it's going to be saved as a JPEG and I'm going to save it on my desktop up there as you can see so I'll just click the image save and that image is now saved I'm going to close down Google now that image you should find will be on my desktop somewhere when it is it's, it's right there okay so what I'm going to do now now bearing in mind the the uh, cameo the silhouette cameo is an A4 or an A3 cutter I'm just for this exa example I'm just gonna uh, use an A4 size now that image we've imported onto our desktop we're not sure of its actual size as I say compared to an A4 sheet of paper our transfer paper is going to be A4 in this instance so I'm going to open up the Cameo Silhouette software and those of you who have uh, a Silhouette Cameo will be familiar uh, with this page. Now the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to change my, my printer setting and I'm going to choose A4 from that drop down list there. So as you can see that's the carrier sheet and that's where an A4 sheet of paper would come. So what I'm going to do now is to import my image into here. So I'll go to File, Open, and then I'm going to look for my image on my desktop, and it's going to be a JPEG file, because we saved it as a JPEG. So I've just got to look on my desktop, and there's the file on my desktop. I'm going to click on it once and OK it. Now as you can see, that image has come onto the uh, carrier sheet and it's way too big so obviously I'm going to need to resize it so again and it's gone back to 12 by 12 so again I'm going to put that back onto A4 so there's our bike on the page and there's our carrier sheet now set to A4 and our image is way too big so I'm just going to click on the image and on the little corner you can see the little box I can drag it to make it smaller and then I'm going to bring it back onto the page again. Now I want to rotate the bike because it's not in the right format for me. So I'm just going to hover over the little dot at the top there. And that is, allows me to rotate the image onto the page. Until you get it straight. Okay. And I'm just going to go to the little corner tabs again, diagonally. And drag the image out to the size I require it. So there we go, it looks a little bit out of proportion. So I'm just going to bring that down a little bit now. And let's say we want to have that image there basically. Okay, that's fine. Now what I want to do 
is to put my cut lines. Now there is ways up here to use these tools and those of you who have been um, playing about with a Cameo would know that you've probably had problems with these tools up here. So I'm going to show you an easy way just to get your cut line around your image. And you use that by going over to the draw a polygon tool which is on your left hand menu. If you just hover your mouse over it, it looks like two triangles or it looks like a bow tie. So if you just hover over that tool and then click that tool and activate that tool, what this enables you to do, your mouse then becomes active. So on the screen you're presented with a little cross that you can move into any position. And what you want to do is to get it in position right near to the edge of the image you want to cut out. Now you might not be able to see that or you might be struggling to see that but you can actually go to the plus and minus tool there which will zoom into the page a little bit. So I'm just going to hit the plus and I've clicked it once and I'm going to click it again. Now as you can see that's allowed me to see a lot more around the image now and if I just zoom in there to the tank for example I'm hoping you can see the mouse on the page. Now what I'm going to do is just go right to the edge of that the image and I'm going to click with my left button once. Now as you can see that left and if I move the mouse away my fingers not on the button now I'm just moving it away to the next position let's say there and I'm going to drop another mark by clicking the left button and then I'll work my way around the bike until I have a cut line you can put, make them as long as or short as you like but if you're going around a curve you'll want them nearer together so you can get a curve because you can only drop as you can see if I move out to there or there you can only drop in straight lines all I will say is if you accidentally drop one there you don't you know be very careful just sort of line up where you want to be and basically just drop your way around the image you're wanting to cut up now this might seem a little long winded and when you want to go up the bike because obviously we can't see all the bike now if you take your mouse finger off of the left button as I say you, as you know you can move the mouse about once you take that over to the the uh, slider bars up the side and once and only once you've got your f mouse over the slider bar can you then drag click your left mouse button down and then move up so you can see the rest of the bike let go and when you come back on the page again your pointer will automatically pick up to where you left off so again there there I'm just dropping little thing little 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 patterns down there as you can see I'm, as I'm going around the curve look, I'm putting them nearer together in a straight line I can go on along further now as I say you've only got to do this once because once you've actually been around the whole bike you're uh, you then save this image and the cut line with it so I'm just gonna zoom around here now I'm not going to be too intricate, and the great thing about the um, the transfer papers I use is that um, you can actually leave a little white border like I'm doing here. You haven't got to cut right on the edge of the image, and you can actually leave this little white border, and you will barely see any border whatsoever on your T-shirt, on your white T-shirt. So I'm just going to carry on here, as you can see not going to be too accurate I'm not worrying too much about uh, white space but I'm, I'm obviously getting as near as I realistically can if I wanted to zoom in even further I could do and take a bit more time but because it's so forgiving the transfer paper it's not really a problem so you can see how once you get going look, when I'm going around a wheel for example you can just zoom around pretty easily now again I've got a bit of a shadow on there so I'm going to maintain that shadow I'm going to keep that so I'm just going to go around the outside where I think the shadow ends and again straight lines up not bothered Let's go right over to the slider put the left mouse button down so I can see the rest of the image I want to do and I can go long straight lines here look as you can see long straight line I've done there move it down again a bit further another long straight line keep going around the image I'm going to the end of the shadow and I'm just roughly going around the shadow there as you can see I'm going to come back in near enough to around the wheel and finish off around the wheel like this so you want to keep nearer together to get a bit of a decent curve going there but um, again it's not on the white t-shirts it isn't really too critical although you, you stay pretty much near the edge of the white background and we'll just work our way around 
the rest of the bike clicking and dropping little markers and these markers then as I say leave the cut line so now I'm going down to the bottom of the page and I'm going to pull the bottom slider along so I can go along and then I'm going to go over to the side slider again and move up and I can just finish off the final bit around the clocks of this motorcycle straight line yep there and just to finish off go over the original first mark that you was on and then click and that then sets the cut line and what you want to do then let's zoom out first zoom out again and one more time and I'm then going to go over to my move tool which is the one at the top of the page there and just click on that now that image now if I zoom in close so that you can see it all the way around here as you can see is the red line which is now the cut line so that is a simple way on a white background to use the transfer paper how to get a cut line around your image now before I put the cut lines what I should have done then what I would have done would be to drag a box over the page was go to object once it was on the page uh, transform and then along to mirror options and then click on mirror vertically now as you can see everything has shifted over even the cut lines have reversed so that is now mirrored now all we want to do is to go back to the open the page tools windows icon there uh, it's the little square box with a red line in it and that brings back our carrier sheet on our page as you can see so our bike is actually on its carrier sheet on the sheet of A4 paper and what we're going to do now is to choose the registration mark so the registration mark settings is up here as you can see if you hover the mouse over it if you click on that you're going to click on set registration mark put a tick in the box or show registration marks and that shows the location of the registration marks now there is a default setting which automatically comes on so you can just leave it on that so that what you're looking at now is our carrier sheet on a sheet of A4 paper we've brought the image into Photoshop with a white background and we've manually using the little bow tie tool over here dotted all the way around our cut line we then taken back to our open the page tools windows tab which brings this back up again and we've then gone to set our registration marks there right so what we're going to do now is to print the image out and the image should print out with the registration marks onto the transfer paper which I'm going to put in my printer so we then just click print right well as you can see over here now I've just printed out now I haven't done this on transfer paper I've just done it on normal paper but I'm just showing you now here's the image of the uh, motorcycle there's the registration marks there's one there there's one there and there's one down here and if you can see the writing on the actual motorcycle it's in reverse so that is ideal for the white transfer the t-shirt paper uh, transfers for the white t-shirt paper because this actual transfer we lay down on the garment and that then puts the writing on the right way and we peel the carrier sheet away but as I say what we would now do would be to place this onto our carrier sheet which I have here now as you can see on the screen there the orientation of the carrier sheet has the little arrow pointing upwards in my instance so I'm just going to take off the sticky paper off of our carrier sheet the protector and I'm going to hold it so that the little arrow just like on the screen there is pointing in the upward position and I'm going to attach my transfer again with in the same orientation into the top corner square as it is on the screen so I'm just going to do that now and I'll just hold it up for you there so you can basically see what I've done there as you can see it's sitting on the carrier sheet in exactly the same situation and that is the way that it goes into your cameo silhouette so all I'm going to do now is to obviously turn on the cameo silhouette I'm going to lift the lid up and I'm going to put the carrier sheet under the two white rollers and then press enter and that just takes the transfer paper into its start position 
So we're going to go back up to our menu bar and I'm now going to press next to the printer button I'm going to press the cut button. Once you've done that you're opened up with this menu and it can ask you to either print or skip print. Well, we've already printed it out so we're going to click here where it says skip printing. You're then going to set the, uh, it's going to tell you some instructions set the rollers, yes place there, we've done that uh, we've done that, we've loaded the cutting mat into the silhouette so we just click now on number 5 where it says configure now we're going to ask it to detect the registration marks automatically so we're going to click that it's now going to do its work and try to locate them registration marks right it's already done that and now what we want to do now is to set our the current settings are already there we, we've got it for printable heat transferable material a speed of six and the thickness of eight now if you if you're using different meat this is what I've got set up for my transfer paper if I was going to cut vinyl out I would have to change these settings and the way you do that is to say you click on the change settings tab and you basically look down the uh, menu there if you're using custom media until you find the media which you're going to be using so if I was using um, if I was using vinyl I would click on the vinyl tab there and it would change the speed and alter the thickness which I would need to cut at and the way you would alter the cutting media would be to remove the blade out of its holder and it's got a clickable wheel which it shows you there and you just put the number which it actually gives you as a guideline there but I'm going to go back to what I had it set on originally printable heat transfer material for light fabrics so it's got a speed of 3, well I like to increase that speed because it does go a bit too slow for me so I'll put it on number 6 and it's showing me a thickness of 2 so if I go over to if I actually remove my blade by clicking it half a click and then lifting out the blade you'll see the blade there, there we go and the little red dot is set on two and the way you adjust that is to literally stick it into the little holder there and you can then rotate and click whatever number you want to set the blade on for depth, depth of cut so I'm leaving it on number two so I would again drop that back into the craft cutter and once it's in there literally just half a turn and lock the blade back into position so going by what the software was telling us it was recommended that we would have two but again these are basically guidelines if you find that it's cutting too deep or isn't cutting at all with the type of transfer paper or vinyl that you're using alter the depth of the cutter in here and then try it again because every different brand is probably slightly thinner or thicker than uh, its counterpart so all you can do then if you want to give it a try is just hit the test cut button and it will cut a little circle or triangle out or whatever and you can see the depth without actually ruining a whole sheet of paper so we're going to leave that like that for the moment and we're then going to click the cut button so it's now reading the cut line that we put on there This was the manual cut line using the little bow tie tool as you know in the left menu. And don't forget this isn't transfer paper which I'm using here at the moment, this is just a test piece of normal paper. And then you click after it's done its work, click down to push it out. And if this was your transfer paper, what you would do then would be just literally to lift up your image, peel off the paper, as you can see as you can see our cut lines have gone around the image and then you'll just peel your transfer off of your carrier sheet and there you would have your transfer ready to be laid down onto your t-shirt so that is the simplest way if you're having all sorts of problems with using the get outline buttons up here and you're getting all sorts of lines come up on your on your screen and you're not sure which are cut lines or which are what or whatever that is the simplest way with transfer paper 
to cut out an image from a white background using the white transfer paper and if you're basically going to be cutting out your black transfer papers you'd go through exactly the same procedure but you'd have to take your image into Photoshop first and then put it onto a black image and what I do then I have a black line all the way around the image and I basically drop my little markers on that black line as near as I can get it because they will be seen as opposed to the ones on the white t-shirt so that is for transfer printing paper the quick way or the way to get you going without using these tools up here so I hope that was of some benefit for you what you would do then obviously is when you go to save this image when you go to close the page down it would ask you to it would ask you do you want to save the the document you would then click yes you would give it a name you'll store it in whatever folder you want to store it in and it will be a silhouette studio cut file so I'm going to call it Yamaha R1 it's going to save on my desktop and I'm going to close that now and just to show you that it has saved and you haven't got to go through that procedure anymore you just open up the silhouette software again not worried about that you're just going to go to file at the top of the page and you're going to go open you're on the desktop you find the file which you had created which is this one here it's already on the desktop as you can see I'm just going to click on it and open it and automatically exactly what you've done with all the settings that you've set in will then all you do is you click print to print out the image on your printer and then you put it in your craft cutter and then go through the cut procedure you haven't got to do any more lines or going around so then your image is saved and from then on it is easy so you just repeat that same formula for every t-shirt design that you do on transfer paper and that's how you get your stock library of your own images and cut lines and various stuff already set up in the next tutorial I'll show you how to do one on vinyl thanks very much